Between Brains, a podcast made by students for students. Today I have two beautiful guests by my side. Um, maybe would you like to introduce yourself first? Of course. Yeah, <laughs> I'm Jason Lee. I'm from South Korea and I'm a second year creative business student in the nature. And then, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm Leah. I'm also a second year creative business student. I'm from Germany. That's basically the basics, yeah. Perfect. And um, this episode is going to be about beauty standards. And maybe would you like to describe the beauty standards of the Western uh, culture and also of the South Korean culture? Sure. Uh, well, basically, I think if I have to summarize it, it's like kind of the princess look we have in Germany. I think so. Like tall, long blonde hair, like blue eyes, or at least where I come from, it's mm. like that. Because I'm from a very small village, so that was like the height of beauty you could reach there. Yeah, it's like a typical yeah, German, like as yeah. everyone else would <laughs> expect them <laughs> to be, right? Kind of. <laughs> so that that was a kind of for me growing up. I think if I come to bigger cities, it's a bit more diverse, but that's the stereotype. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about South Korea? Yeah, South Korea, well, basically we like <laughs> well we prefer small faces mm -hmm. line. i don't know whether that is actually an english term or not but like really sharp jawline mm -hmm. okay and li really slim figure as in your body mm -hmm. and what else like big round eyes yeah that's and really like bright and flawless skin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I noticed mm. that because I've been to other countries, and when I saw South Korean people, they always were super beautiful and super like oh. um, flawless skin, and you know, like makeup on yeah, point. Yeah. You didn't see a single yeah. like oh. imperfection. Yeah, it was just perfect. It was yeah. like a, a doll kind of, you mm. know, like perfect. And um, do you feel like that you fit into the beauty standards, or what is your style like? I would like to say look at me, but that's a very bad <laughs> thing to say in a podcast. <laughs> so, uh, well, um, to make it short, I literally don't fit into this beauty standards because I have very short dark hair and like proportion wise, I think everything's a bit off. But yeah, I, so far it hasn't bothered me that much. So I think you can kind of navigate around that, especially in like Western culture. Mm. I don't think it's so strict. That like if someone falls out of the norm a bit, they get like immediately excluded from society or something. So I don't really fit in, but it's okay. It's okay for you. I yeah. think that's the most important <laughs> part here, right? <laughs> Doesn't matter what mm -hmm. the society thinks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about you? And I also don't fit in that standard. Well, some aspects maybe because they like like people like really small and slim figure, and I'm small. <laughs> in that case, <laughs> and yeah, but overall no. Mm -hmm. But it's yeah, it doesn't matter. I don't care that much. And yeah, like, did you experience like situations where it was like an issue that you or like, if you go out or something, is it? Do you feel like you don't fit in? Well. I don't know how I can how I can feel that <laughs> when I <laughs> walk on street, but well, the thing is, I think that's really not a good thing. But when you're close, like with people, they kind of make jokes, uh, judge your appearance, mm -hmm. like make joke about mm -hmm. your appearance. But in that case, I got quite like nasty <laughs> <laughs> jokes about that like, you have small <laughs> eyes, like blah blah yeah. blah. But I mean, that's just them being. But yeah, do you dumb, feel like so. this is pressuring you? In kind of a way? Personally, no, but I know a lot of people are pressured because of that standard. Mm. And then they just try to fit in, I guess. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But do you have, like both of you, if you're not really fitting in the beauty standards from your country or from like the part you're from, mm -hmm. um, do you have your own beauty standards? What do you think is beautiful? At this point, it's like whatever floats your boat, mate. Um, I don't really have like standards for other people I and mean, that would be kind of ridiculous mm. because I don't, well, in which position am I that I don't fit into standards of others but can make standards for another person. Yeah. So like for me personally, as long as the person, the other person feels good the way they look, if they're okay with the way they look, go off, you're fine. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. just 
Yeah. Also, what I feel like is if someone's really confident about whatever they look like yes. or what they wear, yeah. mm -hmm. that makes such a difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I see people wearing clothes, I think I could never pull off, but they wear them with such confidence, yeah. it just blows yeah. my mind. Yeah, yeah exactly. but at the same time, you can pull off some clothing when like other people can't pull off that clothing. Probably. So yeah, it really depends on mm -hmm. individuals. And I mean, the term standard, it sounds like we are having a rubric like for <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, our beauty is like, oh you don't have this one okay you're not beautiful so, so i don't have like in that case i don't have standard but i uh i find beautiful when i see people who know their own style mm. so like being stylish but it's not like one typical style but it really depends on okay. individuals but and like, oh sorry no like it might, might be a bit off topic, but have you heard of like this book series, like Aqui Pretty Special Extra or something yeah, like that? that? It's basically like this dystopian teen novel, God, shame on me that I read that, um, where uh, like at a certain age, every person in this society gets like sur plastic surgery mm. to make them fit to a certain beauty standard. Until that point, they get called by what is like their most prominent ugly feature. Mm. And if you if you think about it like with if people like actually give you nicknames by so sad, right. what stands out about you or what might not be normal about you that's like why would we do that actually oh my god speaking of nickname about like appearance mm. back in my like back in my primary school my nickname was <laughs> it's really embarrassing <laughs> to say <laughs> a general big head Oh, oh my god! god. Yeah, it's <laughs> so mean. Yeah, I was like, well, but it was like kind of joke, as I said. I like, yeah, we can but make did, a joke. Did, did you take it as a joke, or did it hurt you somehow? When I'm not in a good mood, it makes me piss off. Yeah. But when I'm okay, it was like, okay. Well, it's just yeah, silly joke. Mm. But when I realized there's some pressure on women about beauty, like standard, I think that shouldn't be a joke. Mm. Yeah. And coming back to pressure, have you ever experienced, like maybe in high school or even earlier, have you ever experienced bullying or pressure from friends or even like, yeah, members of your school, I family? Did. Yeah, you did. I was, yeah, as I said, I come from this very small village, so I was also a bit narrow-minded and everyone knew each other. And I always looked a bit more boyish, mm -hmm. also in like middle school and high school. So that was, of course, the perfect opportunity to make fun of me. Um, and then we had like this really cliche clicks, like the cool oh, girls yeah, yeah. and then the sports guys. And it felt like, okay, I don't belong here. <laughs> but it got better with college, like literally. And have you ever thought about changing yourself because of that? Because it, they made you feel so uncomfortable? Actually, I, I thought about it, but I never did it because Every time I tried to look more like them, I felt even more uncomfortable yeah. because it just didn't fit to yeah, who I was. Yeah. So at this point, I'm like, fuck it. <laughs> Am I allowed to swear? You, you oh, are. Okay. <laughs> just go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so basically, I experienced that, but I never acted on that, mm. which I'm happy about yeah, today. Yeah, you should be proud that you didn't. Just stuck to yeah. yourself. <laughs> and what about you? Have you ever... Have you ever experienced something like that? Or did you think about getting plastic surgery, maybe? Well, being bullied because of my appearance. Yeah. Well, in that case, no. But there's, as I said, like joke with oh, yeah, each other about yeah. the uh, appearance. And considering plastic surgery, no, because I'm such a coward to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, sometimes I think of, think of uh, what would I look like if I have double eyelids or something, like more small faces. But it's just, you know, stupid thing when you're alone and you have yeah. nothing to do. Of course. Yeah, but it's not that serious that I think of, like, I need to get plastic yeah. surgery. Yeah. Well, I think plastic surgery is such such a difficult thing to talk about mm -hmm. because and also to decide but because like like you were born this way so it would be weird to change something but like if you're really unhappy with it you should of course change it if you're willing to do it yeah. right but on the other hand what if you don't like it in the end mm -hmm. you're stuck yeah. with it your whole life right and I also do you think it's i mean it's another topic kind of but do you think it um fits to feminism that you have plastic surgery and that you, if you want to do it, that you aren't going to do it? Or is it like against feminism? 
I don't think it's against feminism at all because feminism is basically about giving everyone like that everyone is equal and every choice you make is equal. So I can't say I'm a feminist and then blame women if they want to be stay at home moms because it's their choice they make. Mm. So um, it might not be healthy in some cases, but if you feel better afterwards, if it's better for your mental health, so why should I deny this person feeling better about themselves just because it might not fit in my world view, uh, in my view of how things should go? Mm -hmm. um, in high school, I had a friend, and she she was a dancer, and she had very big breasts, like to a point where it um, was influencing her health, mm -hmm. like her back. So um, I don't know if that falls under the term plastic surgery, but. I mean, it's kind of necessary yeah. for her to like get that fixed yeah, because it hurts her, right? Yeah, so. but she also got weird looks from people when mm. she talked about that. And it was kind of the opposite of what you normally associate with plastic surgery. But it helped her a lot and she now feels so much better about herself. Yeah. So. Well, then she did the right thing, I guess. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and um, did your view on beauty standards change while moving to the Netherlands or maybe through social media or whatever you experience daily? Well, I think mine, I can't say my beauty standard is completely my own standard because you know, I'm influenced by many things mm. and social standard can be one, definitely, mm. I think. But <laughs> um, if you're, uh, wait, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> like if you like we're all so out there with our appearance like through social media mm. and like with uh, people all the people around us and especially now when so many people from different cultures come together mm -hmm. um that actually some people always say like social media is like bad for you in terms of like beauty standards but you see so many inspiring people like who put their se themselves out there in disregard of their so-called imperfections that I think it can be kind of inspiring and yeah I, I don't know how to finish the sentence <laughs> <laughs> yeah and I now remember the question <laughs> so We're doing great. did my beauty standard <laughs> change after I came to Netherlands I think that was the question yeah in that case no because I have not been a person who cared that much about how other people think okay I don't just I, ju I just don't have energy to think about that that much so yeah it's just same when i was in korea and when i'm in the netherlands you know you go girl yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um and now that i don't know if you saw it i saw it on instagram for example there are a lot of korean uh, makeup brands and skincare products mm -hmm. coming to europe um and also like um a lot of for example youtubers um doing their skincare with korean products and also doing the routine, how mm -hmm. you do it, I guess. Um, how do you feel about that? Like that people are taking over the Korean. I mean, if that beauty, if that really helps people, I mean, why not? But we should be aware of like overconsumption on cosmetics. And I, I have to say, I'm not a person who that who do like 10 steps of the skin routine. <laughs> so <laughs> I, can't, I can't say a lot of things of that. But yeah, I mean, if really, if it is really helpful for people, yeah, it's good to know about different perspectives of the same thing from different cultures. Mm. But we always need to, you know, be careful about yeah, to find a balance between addiction to or yeah, between addiction and controlling yourself. Yeah. And coming back to uh, social media or media in general, how do you think um, beauty standards get influenced by it or even you are influenced by it? Do you think it's positive or negative or how do you, how do you <coughs> feel about it? Well, you definitely kind of see what the ideal person should look like. Like if you have movies and you see teenagers in movies, they don't look like teenagers. <laughs> so especially in my young influential mm. phase, it was like, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> Shouldn't I look like this? Like if you, for, I think like one of the most horrific examples at the moment is like Riverdale, mm. where they have like 28 year old 
actors, actors yeah. playing like 16 year olds yeah. or something and I'm like something's off here <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah but at, as you get older I think you can differentiate better and it's always like nice to see or not so nice um, when you look like at female actors and what they're put on spot for and how they have to look and basically then compare it to the male actors where you have like a variety of like yeah. body types and characters and it's like we're still getting there I think that's but true but sometimes when I I feel like when I have a bad phase or a bad mood and I go on Instagram and I scroll down my feed and I see all these perfect girls mm -hmm. and these perfect boys and bodies and hair and faces mm -hmm. I feel so bad okay. and I'm I mean I'm 23 mm -hmm. so I'm an adult actually yeah. so you know <laughs> I know how it works but still it kind of gets me at mm. any time yeah all the Photoshop and Facetune and whatever yes. they use and like then perfect like out of bed look yeah. basically like they, they lay in bed yeah. and, like oh. I woke up like this and I'm like no you didn't <laughs> <laughs> yeah and they they're just selling the, themselves yeah. like this and it, and it works mm. and I know it works with Photoshop and I know mm. it works with Facetune but at the same time I it makes me feel insecure yeah. about myself a lot yeah mm -hmm. I get that. and um i don't know how i mean i'm 23 how do people like in like during puberty mm. may feel you know it's just mm. so influential and i don't know is it like is it even worse in korea like with instagram and social media or do you feel uh, like it's the same i don't i can't compare but I think it's definitely negative mm. influencer because like all of those like celebrities and series or like big industry they're so slim, unhealthy mm. way, and you know like people in puberty they want to be like stars and they follow their diet, mm. uh, which is super unhealthy for like people who are still, still growing. growing up. Yeah, mm. yeah. So, yeah, it's definitely negative. <laughs> For us, it's like, if you, like, labels, like, fashion labels, something they try to be diverse today, I think. Or at least, well, they, they I try. I think they pretend to be. Yeah, I don't, they pretend I don't to know be diverse, if they're So they're kind of trying to show more body types and mm. different kind of women in, like, the advertising. The not even clothes. Yeah. No, it's like, <laughs> oh, we now have curvy models. Mm, yeah, <laughs> that's like an actual normal body you're showing me right now. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Like they're trying or they're pretending to be, but it's not really working. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I think it's just for their image, actually. Yeah. I don't think they really want curvy mm -hmm. girls to be their mm -hmm. models. They mm -hmm. just want to attract people with getting a better image. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, have you seen a couple magazines or cover pages of magazines in a while? The last couple months, maybe. Yeah, the doctor's really. office. <laughs> <laughs> because there are a lot of girls and boys on the cover page, super beautiful, and then like the headings are like getting a super good beach body or like in seven steps or the best diets and whatever. How do you feel about that? Because I think it's just a wrong image. Mm -hmm. There's basically companies making money off our insecurities. Yeah. So, mm. <laughs> so. And personally, the terms like bikini parties. When you think about it, it's so funny. Like, what is bikini body? Yeah, <laughs> what, what, what is like body with a bikini? bikini <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. I yeah, know. I think everyone has a picture in their head what a bikini body is. Yeah. Like the perfect body is for them, mm -hmm. and that's why they can target you with that. Mm -hmm. But like in general, you're right. I don't mm -hmm. think there is a perfect standard. Yeah, because by body. using that term and they showing a specific figure, body figure. People gonna think like, okay, this is gonna be bikini body, and if I want to wear bikini, I need this body shape. Mm. That's really unhealth yeah. unhealthy, yeah. And do uh, Korean magazines also do that? Uh, promote themselves with diets and sports programs and routines? Yeah, well, I don't exactly know about magazines, but we have a or lot also of like advertisements in television or. Yeah, beauty TV programs. Mm -hmm. We have a, quite a lot of them, and they're just basically showing diet when you want to be skinny. Or and I was really shocked uh, the other day. I saw one of the episode of those beauty TV series, and they said like 
the K-pop idol mm. uh, girl group, and she literally eats only one cup of uh, cherry tomato a day, for one day, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I mean, uh, well, if you're grown up, you would know that's definitely not healthy. Yes. And that's like a documentary or like a TV series. No, it's or? kind of talk show about beauty. Thingy. But like, how is she still alive with a pot of cherry tomatoes yeah. a day? That's really mysterious. <laughs> like, <laughs> no one knows. Really yeah, but I mean, if you're like fully grown up and mentally as well, you would know that is not healthy, and I'm not gonna do that. Mm. But if you think about like people who are insecure and like people in puberty mm. who are really influenced by media, they would make yeah, they would think, oh, if I want that body, I also need to do that, which is yeah really really negative like are there critiques on that kind of program or <laughs> is that just like this is how it works <laughs> well i mean they're kind of self-criticizing mm -hmm. like yeah they said yeah this is what i eat but it's super unhealthy but in order to you know fit in. yeah fit in this body shape i need to do it mm -hmm. so they kind of know this is not good but they're still showing still this it. is mm -hmm. what i'm doing so well, yeah, it's kind of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mm. I mean, we have shows like Germany's Next Top Model and stuff, but I, f I feel like I've not seen something like that on German TV. Well, I saw um, Germany's Next Top Model once, and I experienced it because like one girl from my town went there, mm -hmm. and uh, she basically told me that they um, ate uh, co cotton. Yeah, uh, cotton. Cotton. Yeah. Um, they put it into water or sometimes into orange juice and then they fried it and that's what they ate yeah <laughs> so that's also very unhealthy yeah. Mm. um yeah yeah i mean even though they are saying this is not good but they're still showing it and they are well at the same time they're showing they being slim yeah and also and they can they can still live with it so mm -hmm. they basically show that mm -hmm. it, as a su successful pop star yeah. Yeah, so yeah yeah so how bad can it be yeah. yeah it's still bad to show that yeah. yeah yeah also on youtube when i go on youtube i don't even look for it but on my like feed mm -hmm. on my yeah like start youtube page. algorithm is so weird it is so <laughs> weird like yeah. how does kim kardashian eat like how to get slim in like five days and mm -hmm. i'm like <laughs> I don't want to do it. I need my food. Yeah. Um, do you know about the corset movement in Korea? And if yeah. so, could you explain a bit? Well, it's well. I don't know like that well, but as far as I know, it's a movement related to feminism a bit, and women are try to be free from the social pressure and stand out of beauty. Yeah, beauty. Mm. And do you know if it? Um, if it's very or if it's getting more popular in your country and also do you think um it works for them like do you think they they're reaching a goal well i think now it became kind of aggressive way mm -hmm. like yeah there is kind of oh it's really <laughs> hard to say <laughs> it's your time yeah it's your time. yeah well well there are a lot of people doing it but there are still controversy who thinks, oh, that's too radical. Mm. And they're so, they're also putting some pressure on the people who are not doing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there are still controversy oh, going yeah, on, yeah. on that part. But it's, yeah, a lot of people are doing more and more people. Doing yeah. It. yeah, that's, yeah, <laughs> I can say. <laughs> and also just a quick question, because I've been to Canada and there are a lot of Koreans as well, and they use the red lipstick as well, just to, like, in the in the middle part of the lip, like you're doing it, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and I bought it myself because I found it so cool, and it looked so beautiful, and then I tried it on me, and I was like, maybe not, maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow. <laughs> that's, that's not... Yeah, that's why I said it really depends on, like, person, because in my country, at least, like, at least my friends and my, like, people around me, lip is the the one thing you need to do without even the foundation mm. or everything but here i found my, like a lot of my friends they're doing mascara like yeah. the equivalent of my our lip product is mascara yeah. here so i was like hmm, that's very interesting yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and why is it so important to do the lip part does it make you look healthy or what what is the reason behind it to <laughs> make you look alive <laughs> 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 
<laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> the reason why we're doing it, like make it uh, bloody, mm. so we are like healthy. Oh, like oh, I see. Okay, mm-hmm. because when you have like white lip, you look. Yeah, I also feel like I look so pale and sick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so that's the reason. Yeah, why Yeah, I think it looks yeah. really cool if it's just like tapped on the lip, because mm-hmm. it's not like you know a full red lip. Yeah. It just looks really mm-hmm. healthy. And um, do you guys know any other movements except for the corset movement? And do you think? I don't know like any big movement. There's like this uh, Instagram account I follow from like a German, not organization, but kind of like small, very small movement. And they do like photo shoots with women who have, for example, a skin condition Mm. or stretch marks or scars from a C-section and basically create these photo shoots around these imperfections they have to make like people more aware of it and show that this is not something you sh- should have to hide or should be ashamed of, which I think is really beautiful. So um, that's like a small thing I follow. Are you talking about Are You Eight? Mm. No, it's Jamila like... Jamila Jamila? <laughs> uh, like, it's r- like a really small, like, regional thing, mm-hmm. I think. Also, like in German, it's called Liebesklang. Never heard of it. Or, no, 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 that was like the photographer. I think it's basically Project Without Borders, like mm-hmm. literally translated. But yeah, I, that's like the small thing I follow. But bigger movements, like there was like a general movement that was like, we're not gonna shave our legs or armpits anymore. Yeah. Because why should we? Mm. Um, except to appeal to the male gaze. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think I don't know any recent movement, to be honest. Yeah. Coming to that, that's a good point, actually. What do you think about hair? Do you think it's necessary to shave? To I mean, only if you want to answer, you don't have to. But, like, <laughs> but um, yeah, how, how do you feel about the pressure of society that you have to shave? In, like, otherwise you won't be a real woman. I mean, it's a mess. Like it's it's time consuming. But for me, I I just I just like the feeling better when, for example, my legs are shaved. I just for myself personally, I like it better. So that's why I do it. Yeah. If it, at the moment as it as it puts pressure on you, it's not a good thing anymore. Mm. But that's also something everyone has to decide for themselves. Yeah, I guess definitely. how comfortable they are with mm. what level of whatever. Yeah. Definitely. You know how is it for you? <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, I mean, like, is it common in your country as well to just shave every hair off except for the hair on your head <laughs> <laughs> and maybe your eyebrows? Yes, but interestingly, that is like Brazilian. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is really not common in my country. Okay. We are like, we shave, yeah, almost every Everything. part. Mm. But yeah, that part <laughs> is not that common. <laughs> okay. It's more common in this Western, yeah, yeah, Western culture, mm-hmm. I, think so. I guess. I guess so. And just in case someone's listening who is younger than us um, and gets influenced by all the media, what do you, what would you like to tell them, like an advice to get influenced? Or maybe, you know, I mean, for me, it was like a long journey to come like to terms with, I don't necessarily need to worry so much about beauty standards and maybe reevaluating who you follow on Instagram, for example, maybe try like to follow a little less of like these beauty bloggers and look for like accounts like I talked about before, Mm. because if you have like positive influences positive role models in that terms it might be like it can like the influential part can go in the other direction take your time yeah Yeah, and i have a friend of mine she's really pressured uh, from beauty standard like so like korean beauty standard and she uh, makeup every day and she cares a lot of her weight or something and as a friend i really want to tell her don't do that mm. and you need to be the one who decide what is beautiful and what you can do but so yeah i kept saying that to her but one the other day she said you know that you're also putting pressure on me that i 
yeah, I should oh, not yeah. Like the other way around. Yeah, mm. the social standards. So I was like, yeah, that was kind of like, oh, mm. yeah, true. So yeah, I also don't want to say that like, really firmly don't do that, mm-hmm. but you should be, yeah, you should control yourself. You need to decide, okay, which, uh, until which level it's for my, like for myself. And still healthy, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, mm, that's actually very good. So, yeah. we all need to find a good balance between, yeah. you know. Mm. To what level do I still do that for myself yeah. or for others, yeah, basically? Yeah, yeah. 